hello YouTube how are you guys doing today I hope you're all I hope you're all doing well hope you're having a good day maybe got a few of these in your yard kind of looking like it might be an early spring of course it's still you know leap year actually it's february 29th come to think of it the day after my birthday uh you know didn't even think about this being a leap year uh some of you may recognize you know i've been watching our channel for a while you may recognize where i'm at today we've done we've done several stories here of notable people and the you and me of the world you, you know what i mean the regular regular people like us they deserve to have their story told too so we've done we've done quite a few here in this old cemetery here and this is the fairview cemetery in williamson west virginia and this is just a, a stone's throw from our house about three miles uh, depending on how how far you can throw a stone i guess but <laughs> it's about three miles from our house and um since we've started doing our channel see this is graveyard here um i've mentioned it several times in other videos most of the documentation to this graveyard was lost see we had a when i was little i was in like third grade i think we had uh, a massive massive flood here in 1977 and it pretty much well it destroyed all kinds of stuff you know really but all of the records to this graveyard were pretty much lost during the 77 flood and a lot of these people well they're, they're they've been lost to history and uh you know we've highlighted several of them we've done a lot of investigative documentation i suppose is probably about the best way to put it researching how this person is related to that person and where they might have been buried in relation to them and we've looked up i don't know countless countless people in this graveyard and listed them on find a grave and things like that um so a lot of them aren't as lost as they were you know a lot of their old stories we've brought back you know mccoy right up there Tony, right back here, Medal of Honor recipient, a Hatfield McCoy relative, right down here by that mauls mausoleum right there. Some of you may recommend the one, the open vaults with the coffins sitting out in the open. That's that one right there. We have a very special story for you today. Normally, when we do these stories, we have a person, a subject, you know, this Harris grave. You know, we might be doing a story on Mr. Harris here. Hang on. Well, it doesn't say a first name. We could be doing a story on them and have to research it. And we'll put it that way. And, you know, you kind of just go from there. But today, we will be featuring three individuals. Three very unique individuals. Who, who 110% deserve to be remembered and you will see why in just a minute you will 110 percent agree with me that these people should be remembered now we've made several videos about how you know southern west virginia um back in the day you know the coal history the coal heritage you know, the place is called the Billion Dollar Coal Field for a reason. And, you know, of course it's not. It's a shadow of what it used to be. Um, but it's still still existent, you know. The, the majority of the world still runs on coal, let's just be honest. But the thing about it, you see, back in the day when coal was king, we have a festival called King Coal Festival it lifted some people out of poverty but realistically speaking back in the day it was a horrible job it was probably one of the most 
dangerous jobs, you know, that there was. And so that's what we're going to be showing you today. We're going to be introducing you to three people who lost their lives doing this job in the coal mines. But the entire world was changing at this time. And these men provided the power source that it was all done with. They had incredibly difficult jobs. And you can see where the city's been clearing out. That's good. You know, realistically speaking, coal mine has always gone hand in hand with parts of West Virginia and Kentucky. And everyone knew it was dangerous. But in the area, it was usually the only option to support yourself and your family with you know, limited jobs, education, and other resources in the area. There wasn't a whole lot to pick from, to be honest. It was like I've shown you and told you countless times in other videos. It was an extremely dangerous job. And the men who did it held no value whatsoever to their employers. Your life was expendable. The coal was what mattered. Untold thousands have died in the coal mines, young and old. Their lives were wiped away that fast, quickly replaced by one of the others waiting for a job opening. Scores of young men never got to become old men or have children and who knows what kind of butterfly effect that had. Uh, not only are they lost, but who knows who might have been born that we don't even realize now. Interesting thought, though, isn't it? But today, we're going to show you three men that were lost in the coal mines and tell you a little bit about them and how they died. Now, this right here is John Marshall Ward. It's James M. Ward, but his friends called him John, so we're going to use John. Unfortunately, he died at uh, about th at 30 years old working for the Red Jacket Mining Company. And that would have been just up past Mate 1, West Virginia, about 40 minutes from from his gravesite here. John was born March 29th in 1918 to Shane and Lucy Ward. How and why he ended up in the mines is a story that we will never know, but he is listed as being married to a woman named Helen at 22 years old, and he registered for World War II on October of 1940 and was working in the mine then. But on October 2nd, his life ended there. The death certificate said he died of a hemorrhage and shock from my, a mine injury to the pelvis and spine. A tragic way to end a day that you thought would be just like any other day. During the late 1800s and 1900s, thousands of coal miners died from roof collapses, explosions, slate falls, getting crushed by equipment, and underground fires, and numerous other reasons. Large-scale disasters were frequent. You know, we've, we've showcased a couple of those, as a matter of fact. The mine safety laws in West Virginia at the time were the weakest in the country. And what laws did exist had very few, if any, provisions to ensure their enforcement. John's story is like countless others that have been silenced with time. And that's what we are here to do today. Guys, meet John.
a young man just trying to make a living and trying to feed his family. That's the only thing he did wrong. That's it. Now, you imagine. I know that how this sounds. I get it. I know. But there's, I don't really see any other way to say it than to say it. You, you know what I mean? When John's life ended, I mean, you're, you're bleeding. It's a hemorrhage. You know, you're, you're hemorrhaging blood. And you've got a spinal injury. So, real good chance you're probably paralyzed. You're lying there in a pool of your own blood watching what's happening but you can't move. Now that I don't even I, I used to say I'm not at I'm rarely at a loss for words but since I've been doing this stuff I've found myself at a loss for words numerous times and this is one of them it's just sad to think you know that this young man and you can see him right there you know the hair all you know made up and young man with a whole future his whole life to look forward to you know wife and children and all this kind of stuff None of it happened, though, did it? Anyhow, guys, I'll see you at the next stop. Uh, got to load up. Got a pretty good ways to go to get to the next stop. So, I guess without further ado, guys, we will see you there. Okay, now, this right here is the second stop that i wanted to show you guys and um you know for those of you who know a little bit about history been watching our channel for a while you will recognize that this is the hatfield cemetery and this is where devil Lance hatfield is buried he's right up there as a matter of fact just beyond those crosses where that big tree is he's just just past the big tree right in the center and as usual it seems there's always a mountain that Leo has to climb I mean I know that seems to be a trend but it looks as though the trend continues today there's another mountain to climb so I'm gonna head on up here and there's actually two up here that I wanted to bring you guys here and show you. So, I guess nothing to do but to get up the mountain. It don't look that steep from here. When you're standing here, I don't know how it looks on camera, but I can tell you that when you're walking, it, it doesn't look that steep until you get about halfway around that curve right there and you realize just how, how far up it really is. So... I guess nothing to do but go climb a mountain, right? Always, 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 always another mountain for Leo to climb. All right, we'll see you guys when we get up there. Okay. Excuse me, out of breath just a little bit. I tried to pause for a minute to catch my breath, but it don't always work out that way. Now, this right here is the grave that we came for. This one and one more. Actually, there's another one right up above here that I came here for too. Now, Troy Ward Vance. Now, I realize that's... A name, there's a really, we'll just say there's a 99% chance that you guys don't recognize this name. There's also a 99% chance you know who this man is once I tell you who his grandfather was. You see, this right here is the grandson of, of Devil Ants Hatfield. That is Devil Ants Hatfield's grave right there 
and the vice right beside of him, John C. Hatfield above them, and there's Troy, and uh, Troy and Elias right there. But this is the one that we came to see today, right here. It's about six foot tall as the spire. Troy Ward, son of John T. and Nancy B. Vance, 1900 to 1918. Okay, now Troy was, like I just said, you know, 1900 to 1918. Troy was the 18 year old son of Nancy Vance Hatfield and John T. Vance. Nancy, his mother, is the daughter of Devalance Hatfield and Levisa. Guys, he started he started his first day in the coal mines uh, just a few days after Thanksgiving in 1918 and he was killed on his very first day on the job the very first day now you think about that guys this is an 18 year old kid you know you've you've raised your kids to be responsible adults and all this kind of stuff you know you've taught them the way of the world in your view and on day one this happens on day one and like I said this is Troy and Elias right here uh, the, the grave we were just looking at is right there this is Troy and Elias they were killed over liquor disputes, selling liquor, that sort of thing. They both got killed on the same day and their coffins are buried in the same hole. Yes, they both got killed on the same day. And of course, this is Devil Lance Hatfield himself. The one and only Devil Ants Hatfield, guys, is just a few feet away. Kind of hard to fathom, isn't it? You know, just... And of course, there's all kinds of other stories up here. French Ellis, we did a story on him. And several of the others here. That's John C. Right there, John C. Hatfield. Uh, the one with Roseanne, the baby. That's him. The other one that we came up here to find is right over here. This is the other one that I came up here to show you guys. Now this, this one here, like I said, this is just above Devil Ants Hatfield's grave. His is right there. This is just a few feet away. And as you can see, this one has a great big chain that goes around it. And if you look close, It says killed by accident. You see that? Wise Kimmel, 1905 to 1927, killed by accident. Now this one right here, hang on, let me get back here where you can see, get a good view. That's what it looks like. Now, actually, to be honest, Wise Kimmel here he, he is a very special story to us because he was the very first time that we tried to figure out the extended circumstances of how someone had died. And it pretty much changed our, our YouTube channel forever. Researching his grave added a powerful new tool to our arsenal. We wanted to know why it said killed by accident so badly that we actually paid two hundred dollars to join my heritage because they have west virginia death certificates and ancestry doesn't for some reason but he is the son of sam and mary kimmel guys he was only 21 years old when a piece of slate fell on him at work inside a coal mine 
he was only 21. Now you kind of, you kind of, I know this is going to sound a little bit morbid, but you have to bear with me and you'll see why in a second. Now, in situations like this where there's a slate fall, a rock, it's called a, a rib roll when the side comes out. When something like that happens, your body is not going to stop this mountain from crushing you. You, you understand? The mountain's going to, it's going to crush you. If there is something that catches the rock, say if your chest is, say your chest is 12 inches from front to back, and this slate top, the slate falls on you, and there's now, say your, whatever, we'll pick a number, we'll say it's 10 inches from the front of your chest to the back of your back. If you're pinned at a 9 inch, you get it? Your stomach is on the ground and 9 inches above that is this slate fall where the rock has caught it and stopped it short of smashing you, you know, killing you outright. Okay? Why is Kimmel here? Guys, I don't know how to say this without sounding a certain way, and I'm trying really hard not to. Wise Kimmel, he was crushed under this, and he died of asphyxiation. He wasn't crushed outright. He he died of asphy asphyxiation. So I would imagine that his death was pretty similar to drowning, you know, because you couldn't, you're conscious, you're aware. That you, you can't take in air. The only thing, the only thing that you can do is lay there and hope it's over quickly. And this one kind of started a snowball. And a lot of the videos that you guys see today, you know, that we've done, wouldn't have been possible without this grave, without seeing this grave that killed by accident and not knowing what happened oh like i said this one is kind of a special one to us and i most certainly we most certainly wanted to make sure that wise kimmel was in this video he deserves a place there for sure but even like devil ants down here his grandson you know devil ants he had lots of money he was by no means a poor man you know people think broke hillbilly you know they see the old pictures and he's you know dressed like a hillbilly so they think broke hillbilly devil ants was a very wealthy man that's an italian marble statue on his grave he was a very wealthy man but the thing about it that's what the jobs were back in the day you know here it was coal and the coal companies, they didn't care who you were, or what family you were from, or even if you had family, it didn't make a bit of difference. That is what happens when greed is allowed to, to prosper in places where it shouldn't. You know, when you're doing a dangerous job, it should be about you, you know? You surviving this dangerous job and going home to your family. You guys rest well. And now we've told your story. But there's a lot more. We're going to come back up here. This was one of our one of our very first YouTube videos was up here. Thank you all for coming along. We very much appreciate you. And we hope you've enjoyed our little video today about 
some of the dangers, some of the pitfalls that um, a lot of these old coal miners had to endure back in the day. Not just hard work, not just risking your life, also risking the rest of your family too. And God bless. And we will see you guys next time on the Hillbilly Files. This is Leo. Hillbilly's out. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.